Oops, sorry. Um, I'm not going to go through this, this list right now, but just to show you that it exists. Through an extensive process, <coughs> we identified the value propositions that go into materials passport and what really makes it important for uh, companies and for building owners. And we really got some surprises when we went through uh, the process. And also, it's a bit surprising, but there's a lot of value propositions connected with materials. So that's why the passport is a little bit of rocket science, <coughs> because you have to put all this stuff together. But you can do that with software. The result of all of that, and I have to credit our colleague at uh, Rotterdam School of Management, Diana Den Held, who worked with us very closely to get the European Resource Efficiency Platform to adopt the concept of product passports, which they introduced um, in uh, 2013. But they got it wrong. They introduced it as a glorified environmental product declaration. And the result of that was that a lot of big companies said, no, we are not going to adopt this. We're not going to use it for our products. It's just an extra costly bureaucracy. And we're already doing this stuff. So we don't need another bureaucracy on top of it. That was a very important lesson for the EC. They got slapped in the face by the companies. Materials passports are designed to solve that problem by focusing on value. So this is real time. I'm going to be speaking next week at the Green Week uh, uh, prep preparatory conferences on exactly this topic. And we're hoping to uh, support the EC to transit towards this value proposition instead of bureaucratic environmental proposition. OK, um, I just want to finish up uh, by saying this is a um, I just want to point this out to you. There's a new publication that was published in February of this year. It's called Model Behavior, 20 Business Model Innovations for Sustainability. And this is a really interesting publication because it actually talks about the real business models that are being used in the marketplace right now to implement sustainability. And one of the conclusions that they come to is Business model innovators tend not to be global Fortune 500 companies. In other words, the big companies are really not the ones who are doing the innovation. They have innovation departments, but the innovation departments seem to be very successful at spinning people out who then start their own companies. That's what's going on with a lot of the big companies. That's very important for Venlo because uh, you know the whole region has a lot of SMEs operating here. And actually, that's where your innovation is, is, is really happening. So this offers you leverage to do something. 